Hello and welcome to this introduction on the Overmind DevTools. Uh, what we can see here is the Overmind website and it's actually built on Overmind. It's a little bit overkill to use Overmind for, for a plain website, but we're doing some stuff here that requires us to actually create a, a JavaScript application. So why not just use Overmind? Um, so uh, what we can do first of all here is just jump right into the DevTools. And what we can see here on the first tab is the state of the application. So whatever state you have initially created, if you have namespaced it or whatever, you have access to all the state uh, in the dev tools. And of course, if we change to guides here, the state uh, will update. Uh, you can also traverse the state and open it up and uh, drill down into it as you would expect uh, and you can also change it directly from from the dev tools so for example if I click query here and I type hello and this uh, is JSON so it needs to be serializable uh, if you type something wrong you will get help with that so I'll click there and what we see now is that it we have hello in our search um, and you can also do the same thing with uh, any um, nested um, path in your uh, state tree. So for example, if I click versions here, you actually get all the state uh, underneath versions. So you can change uh, and do stuff there as well. For example, let me change the version here to 19. And we go back and we see it's version 19. So this is a great tool to um, kind of like change the, the state to see how the UI is affected by that uh, state change. Okay, and let's move on to the next tab and that is actions. Now actions is the, um, is the place where you really want uh, to spend your time because it gives you a lot of information about your running application. So as we can see here uh, on the left is a list of actions. And then on the right here, we have the currently selected action. At the top here, we have a list of all the actions available in our application. And we can actually run actions, which we will see shortly. So first of all, let's um, dissect what this actually happen, uh, happens inside the Overmind website. So we have an uninitialized hook, which is just an action that runs uh, immediately when Overmind instantiates. And what we can see here is I'm running some effects and I'm doing some uh, changes. So I'm grabbing the current theme. I'm setting the show view help to false. I'm setting up the routes, uh, as we can see here. Uh, the array here just is the arguments for the, um, for the effect. Uh, and then we fire up the router, we go and grab the versions and we set those versions. We can also see up here that we got an input to this action. Uh, call and it's overmind. So it's the instance of overmind. So all the non serializable uh, data that is passed into your actions is named and highlighted with a purple color like this. Uh, on the right side here, we can see that a flush occurred related to this action. So uh, basically, what happened here is that when we set the versions, that affected the top bar and the view selector. Uh, the chain thing on the right side here is the um, derived, if any derived state was affected by any state changes inside that action. Okay, so let's move to open home. So here we can see that we are actually using the functional API. Here we had just an action, but on open home we are running operators. And the reason we do that is because we have started to share some logic, uh, specifically the ensure view and TypeScript uh, logic is shared between the different um, uh, routes because you can access the, the page uh, or the website on any route. So we have to make sure that we have set the correct uh, view and TypeScript uh, to display the documentation correctly. So here we can see that we're setting TypeScript to true, we're setting theme to uh, react. And we are also um, uh, uh, storing in local storage uh, some stuff. And uh, why do we set it to true? Uh, well, we can have a look at what the input is to this um, 
operator. And what we get in here is details about the route. So we have params, which is empty, but query here. It has TypeScript and the view, and that's the information that is used to do these mutations and run these side effects. And then we run an operator that actually uh, loads up the the home uh, the home page, um, and then we can see that also here we are doing some um, flushing so that the components updates. So um, the reason uh, this operator did not do a flush is because everything happens synchronously. So it doesn't, it kind of batched up all the changes during this operator. And then it started the next operator, which also did a mutation. But it wasn't until it actually did this asynchronous side effect here that it told, oh, components, I'm gone from synchronous mode to asynchronous mode. Now you have to update. So that is why this operator is responsible for causing the components to update. And as we can see, there were quite a few changes there because all the examples, code examples, depends on TypeScript and theme to display the correct uh, example type. Uh, okay, so what we can do now is we can try to change the theme here. So let's change to Angular, for example. So when I select a theme, you can see that I pass in the name of a theme here. Um, and then it just um, uh, redirects uh, using, um, using the information about the, the type of uh, view we have decided upon and if we have decided uh, to use TypeScript. And it actually does a, a rerouting because that is what drives the state, it's the URL. So we have in the query at the top here, we have the selected view and if we're using TypeScript or not. It just makes sure that whenever you share URLs from the website, it all it's always shared in the view and TypeScript you have selected. Anyways, uh, let's try to actually fire off an action here. Uh, so I can write view here instead. And when we execute this now, we can see that uh, the, a new select theme action has run and it does a reroute again to view. And then it opens up the guides again with view as a theme. And if we move back here, we can see view has been selected. So this is different than changing the state explicitly. Now we are running logic uh, from the dev tools. What is really interesting about this concept is that you will actually be able to develop your application without the UI. Meaning that you can add actions, logic, effects, and then you can run these actions directly from the dev tools. So you don't need to implement a component, a button click, or a component did mount, or whatever, uh, to fire off the logic you're working on to figure out if it's working as intended. And uh, you can just use the dev tools and it tells you everything it does. So that's a, a really powerful tool. Um, moving on to the components tab, we can see that uh, we have an overview of the connected components, uh, components that are actually looking at Overmind state. And we get some information about how many times they have updated and how many paths they are looking at. So for example, the search is looking at the query and the show search result um, state. And the view selector uh, looks at uh, even more state. At the bottom here, we can see that this indicator has become red. And that is because um, the guides is looking at a lot of state. And that indicator, that red indicator, is there to help you identify components that is looking at a lot of state because often that indicates that you could split your components up more, so they share uh, more what state they're looking at, um, uh, preventing too many renders to occur. Now, in this case, we are just showing off the guides and we're not actually changing the guide state, so it doesn't really matter, but it's still a good indicator. Moving over to history, we can see a chronological order of um, the actions and the effects and the mutations and even the flushes. When do they occur in uh, order, in history? 
So what we can see here is that we start off by running the oninitialize um, action. And then it does some mutations, it does some uh, effects. And we can see here that we indicate that we have started an effect called router.start. And we can see up here with the check, we can see that that's when it's ended. Um, so what happens in between here is that it starts running open home. Uh, and then it moves back to on initialize again and then back to open home. So this is why a chronological list of what is happening inside your app uh, is beneficial because you run actions in parallel, like not exactly in parallel, they kind of like uh, change uh, execution because JavaScript is a single threaded environment. But uh, off, well, not often, but you can get into a situation where two actions operate on the same state and they do it in, uh, in an order you weren't prepared for. Uh, so the history tab uh, gives you insight into, into exactly that. Um, and again, you can open up uh, and look at the values and, and everything here. Okay, uh, and then we have the flushes. Uh, so this gives you a list of uh, what actions caused what flushes and what did those flushes contain, like why is it a flush? So we can see that, for example, open guides uh, changed some state here. Uh, so that is what this uh, flush is all about. Uh, and the same for closed search. The reason it caused a flush is because it, uh, it changed this state. So it just gives you um, information about the same data from a different perspective. And that's what it's really all about. Like debugging and getting like an overview of your app is about looking at it from different perspectives. And that's exactly what the DevTools helps you with. Uh, at the end here, we just have the console, which just shows all the messages. This is more of a debugging thing, uh, but you get inside all the messages passed into uh, the Overmind DevTools. Um, at the top here, you can actually have multiple apps. So if you're working on multiple apps at the same time, you can change between those apps. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it for the DevTools. Uh, it's really more of a companion application um, than a debugging tool. So you will use it to understand what actually happened now inside my application. Uh, but it's also just a good way to keep that mental image of how you have defined your logic and how it actually runs inside your application. So thanks for following me and I hope you liked the DevTool.